Aquarius, welcome to your November and December 2017 prosperity reading. It's Raina here. And before I begin, I've been creating mantras or affirmations. I think that's more what it is for each sign regarding abundance. And let me, <laughs> on the fly, try to create one for you. I would say... I am flexible mentally and allow new ideas and ways of being to flow through me. And I'm saying this because you are a fixed sign and yet you are also known as being psychic, as being very good at having flashes of insight, having brilliant ideas, the sign of the inventor. But sometimes in order to allow that to come to you, you have to be open to it and you may be like um, stuck on a certain point or maybe just fixated on one thing and what, the more you can free your mind of all preconceived notions and other things that you may be thinking about, the more it opens, it gives space for things to come to you and through you. Okay, so in terms of astrological transits that are going to be affecting you in the next couple of months, uh, I will be picking three oracle cards, by the way, but I just wanted to tell you about this because there is a big emphasis in November on your career sector, the 10th house, and which happens to be Scorpio. And we have around the time of the new moon on the 18th of November, there's going to be the sun there, the moon there, Jupiter and Venus. And Jupiter and Venus can even connect with money and so this kind of a reading is specifically about the attraction of material um, goods to you. And um, so that might be a time when you are really receiving and attracting such things. Good time to plant seeds of intention. I will be doing... Well, I have a video for you for November, a... Um, an astrology video. So look on my channel for that. And that goes deeper into the month of November. But that's very auspicious to have all that great energy in the in the career sector. So that, that could be like um, some kind of a new, like maybe a uh, promotion and also a boost in your income as a result of that new direction that is financially viable. And um, let me think in terms of anything else. Well, there's a full moon in your fifth house on December 3rd in Gemini. And this can be something where you are working towards your own business and you are putting the finishing touches on it. Maybe you want to launch something. I believe that's the first day of a Mercury retrograde so in Sagittarius, so that may not be the best time to launch businesses, but maybe you've been working towards at least getting things ready. And um, maybe in the new year, you want to do something along those lines. The fifth house can also be about creative endeavors. Of course, your own business is a creative endeavor, but I'm talking about like artwork or something like that. So if that's something where you can have money, um, you know, profit from it, then that might be also what is happening. I'm trying to think about anything else I want to tell you. I think I'm going to leave it there and then just pick the cards. Taking off my sweater here. It's getting kind of hot. So picking a card from the Earth Magic deck in the Native Spirit deck in honor of the recent full moon in Taurus. <coughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't think I've ever gotten this one. 
volcano volatility. I like the, those colors. Um, it's so funny because an Aquarius person is probably the opposite of <laughs> volatile that you'll ever find unless they, unless you like you have a moon in, in Leo or something that's kind of making you more, um, you know, flammable. <laughs> Oh, this is so cool because I'm picking cards that I don't normally pick. This is from the Wisdom of the Oracles, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not the name of it. I'll tell you in a second. Freya, Phases and Cycles. We'll see what that represents. Let me see the name of this deck. Keepers of Light. Okay. And then the last card is from the Native Spirit deck. Trickster. I'm just getting the this card. Pele is the goddess who lives on the big island of Hawaii, dwelling there in the craters of the active volcano Kalawi, I can't pronounce it. She is considered passionate, volatile, and capricious and is perhaps the best known of the Penelope, Penelope? I don't know, of Hawaiian deities. Since 1983, she has been sending ribbons of lava down the mountainside and into the sea, thereby creating new land. In this image, we see her subtle visage. Okay, so this is supposed to be somebody's face. And okay, I don't know if you can see this. In the spewing fire of the volcano, in the ancient Hawaiian chants, Pele is described as she who shapes the sacred land, and it's from this magnificent and powerful goddess being and her periodic eruptions that new earth is formed as a result of lava as a resulting lava merges with her sister the goddess of the sea namaka hoka hai this is a particularly volatile time for you unexpected changes sometimes quite sudden and dramatic are occurring in ways that you have absolutely no control over these occurrences may be so powerful as to shake up what you formerly thought of as the foundations of your security. They may even cause you to reassess the direction your life is taking, to question some of your relationships, or to reevaluate re the work you have chosen. Although these events may rock your world, know that spirit is the guiding force behind them. It is a matter of finding your trust that life knows what it is doing in the midst of these storms of change. It also requires you to make adjustments quickly and not to cling to what was, but instead move forward and welcome with your arms wide open what is yet to come, all from a place of being present in this moment. You truly have nothing to fear. And, um, you know, as soon as I started reading that, I was thinking of that lunar eclipse that you had in August, August 7th to be exact. Those reverberations may be continuing, and I'm sure that some of you, at least, have had major changes occur, because even with the the Leo solar eclipse, that was in your opposite sign. So you may have been experiencing different things going on, even now as we near the end of the year, and thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, what's happening? And what's happening is that you are the one being targeted now with the eclipses, you're going to have a solar eclipse in February, in mid-February. So, um, again, because you're a fixed sign, that may be kind of unnerving for you more than a sign, your fellow air sign Gemini, which might be very much more adaptable to change than you typically are. But you can do this because you are very, you're a visionary. So you are kind of looking at the future. And so the only thing that you have to 
get in gear with is the ability to kind of roll with the punches and not cling to the known. And that's the only thing. But your mind is certainly forward looking. So I don't think that you're going to have too many problems. And also what's so neat is that, you know, what I consider your main ruler, Uranus, is a planet that is all about sudden changes, unpredictability. So um, that shouldn't be something that you shy away from. And in terms of like career matters or finances or things like that, keeping on your toes is not a bad thing. The more you can tailor a life to yourself that that is flexible, that you know doesn't require you to live in in one particular way, I think the better because you're going through these things since you have you had that eclipse, you have to kind of be aware that things are being shaken up, and um, same with your your opposite sign Leo, and. Um, and so for the next year, when you have your solar eclipse, same thing, it's still going to bring change. Now, it may bring new things into your life rather than take away old things, but it still is going to be change, and it may not feel much different uh, to you. You may still feel threatened by change, and that's what you have to kind of get over. And if you do, I think you'll just really thrive. So now we have um, the Keepers of Light, and let me get this one out and see how you pronounce. Okay, well you guys who are... Norse is Nor Norwegian, right? So, I think, but um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Freya? Phases and cycles, and that's what I was saying about these lunar... Um, the eclipses and the or types of cycles. There's a beginning within every ending. Illusions are revealed and released. And that's another thing too, because when we simplify things or make it simplistic actually, when we say, okay, lunar eclipses are endings and, and solar eclipses are beginnings, every beginning implies an ending and same with um, endings being beginnings. Freya, which means lady, is the Norse goddess of the moon and love. She is the twin flame of Odin and a warrior goddess who offers deep spiritual. See, and there, there you go with the moon. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lunar eclipse. Deep spiritual and physical protection to those who call on her. She will stand before you with her shield and spear, keeping you safe from harm. She works closely with moon energy and helps us recognize that our life is a cycle that is always changing. She herself is the maiden, the mother, and the crone aspect of all women and guides them to see the wisdom these cycles bring. We all go through phases and cycles of growth, and Freya is the energy that supports this. She has a raven spirit totem, which is said to represent her capacity to travel between heaven and earth. A phase of your life may be coming to an end, but it's important to know that it's not the end. When one door closes, another opens. You may have been desperate for change, but now that it's here, you could feel vulnerable. Know that the mighty goddess Freya will guide you. Illusions are now being revealed so that you can leave behind anything that is false, step into your peaceful warrior-like energy, and welcome the changes you deserve. Tie up all loose ends and take heart. This is an exciting time. Yeah, I mean, I think that's another thing, too, with lunar eclipses, is that, you know, they talk about things are being taken away from you. But um, I think also that you may have an active role in it as well. The other thing, too, I would say, Aquarius, is that when we get... Oh, this is a good one, too. Yeah, I was just thinking about this. As we get into December, you're going to have Saturn in, enter 
Capricorn, which is a sign right before you, so that's your 12th house. Okay, and if some of you are born like, I believe like if you're born in, like you're going to be in the late 80s, so you would be in your late 20s now, you're going through your first Saturn return, and you have Saturn in the 12th house. So it's going to be very, I don't know if intense is the right word, but definitely very deep. Now, this could also apply to you if you're born in the late 50s, I think. Yeah, because I think that's the generation that also has... No, I'm sorry. It would probably be early 60s. Would it be early 60s? I don't know. Maybe like mid-50s, if you're born around that time, that you would have your Saturn return and maybe Saturn in the 12th house. It, it depends on the individual, obviously. But regardless, if you have, just as a solar in your solar chart, this is going to be your 12th house. And if it's your rising sign, it's going to be in your natal chart. And the 12th house, Saturn, is very intense for two reasons. One, because Saturn represents karma, and the 12th house represents karma. So it's kind of like um, causing you to look at these things that have been plaguing you, maybe limiting you, self-limiting beliefs and stuff um, for many years, maybe many lifetimes, but also just the nature of what the 12th house represents is not really um, something that you can see tangible results of, I would say, because it's more, it's a water house, it's more of a, an inner state. So it's like with, with a planet like Saturn that is about grounding and about organization and the 12th house is so disorganized, it's so diffused. Um, that in itself can be challenging too, but Again, there are different seasons, and this is a season to look at those things that you may typically shove under the rug in terms of things that you do that, that are destructive, attitudes you hold, behaviors, maybe like patterns that you want to break free from, these kind of things can be dealt with, and, and actually with Saturn in the 12th house, you can even lay down a foundation for a spiritual discipline that can help with that, with healing that. But it's just that it's not something that is as easy to grasp as if you have Saturn in the, let's say you have Saturn in the 10th house, and you're, you're like devising this pattern for your career that you want to follow this 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 whole format and that can guide you for the next 30 years and you can be very successful if you properly use that energy but um, anyway I think that this that that goes along very well with that while um, you have the Sun in the 12th house around the time of the winter solstice and a new moon there in January. And just this sense of that 12th house, that mystical house, and tying up loose ends. That's what the 12th house is, since it's the last house. And um, getting ready for your solar return in late January or February. And then the last card I have here is the trickster. And... Um, this is from the Native Spirit deck, and I'll tell you what this one says. Oh, <laughs> I picked the, uh, let me see. I think it's right here. Things are not as bad as they seem. Something that seems bad may be, in fact, may in fact be good and vice versa. Don't take everything at face value. Look beneath the surface. This card encourages you to try to find humor or gentle amusement 
and seemingly difficult situations. It also encourages you to have irrepressible fun. Step out of the mold. Your native spirit wants you to know. In indigenous traditions, there is the concept of the tricksters. In Native American traditions, the trickster is often depicted as a wily coyote, but sometimes the trickster is a human called Hayoka. There is a lighthearted, fun aspect of the trickster, but there's also the caution to tread carefully because things are not always as they seem. Be discerning. What appears to be a good opportunity may in fact not be. The wonderful aspect of this card choosing you is that it offers the opportunity to step out of old, outmoded ways of perceiving yourself. The trickster allows you to see yourself in an entirely new way and asks you to step out of old routines and habits that may be keeping you stagnant. And the journey. It may sound very strange, but the easiest way to activate the energy of this card is to howl like a card. A coyote. If you can, it's even better to do so during the light of the full moon. This breaks up stagnant energies and brings in fresh vitality. Okay. I, you know, that's another thing. If I had to put these cards together, I would say to keep flat, flexible. You know, the card with volatility. Things that could be unstable that you're trying to hold on to. You know, not allowing change to come into your life. That you have to be flexible. The card about cycles. Understanding that there's a season for different things and not trying to um, go against the tide. And, of course, with the trickster, there's the added element of seeing certain things as negative that actually may be positive when viewed in the long term or the bigger picture and things that seem good that really are not so anyway Aquarius I hope you enjoyed this if you'd like a private reading please click on the link below my website is rainamoonastrology.com have a great rest of 2017 bye